Hello YouTube, this is Shooter250 and today I'm doing a review of the Texas Instruments TI-36X Pro. It's a fairly new calculator that TI has out um, and I understand that it's designed to be more comparative or compete against the Casio FX115 line. Uh, the Casios have been very popular in the engineering schools and with engineers as far as uh, PE and FE exams because it's one of the four type of calculators that are allowed on it. Um, it's been very popular in school. All my uh, people I was in school with, we all used the Casio. And now that I'm out of school, I'm studying for the PE. I've been looking at other calculators possibly. And I've come across this Texas Instruments 36X Pro. And so I'm going to go over some basic features with you. Uh, tell you about, I guess, some highlights. Compare it a little bit to the Casio uh, pros and cons and tell you about uh, an error I found in the calculator. That's a big one coming up later. And then some possible improvements to make this calculator better. So we'll start out with mode. And as you can see, you've got your basic calculator functions on this right side. That's very typical. Um, and under the mode function, if you're familiar with the Texas Instruments 89 or 83, those type of calculators, you can see that's where you choose between degrees, radians, uh, if you want floating point decimals or if you want a fixed number of decimals. You can choose if you want your output in real only, if you want to have complex and rectangular format or polar format. And we'll scroll down through the, here and look and show you all your options. Uh, which your base is, whether you want decimal, hexadecimal, binary, or octal. And also if you want the classic view or the math print view. Uh, I can give you an example of what the math print view is if you're not familiar with that. Uh, the calculator tries to make things look as if the way you write on a piece of paper. And I'll give you an easy example of this if you look at an in integral. And you can see you had spots to type in your lower and upper limits and your function just like you write it down. So let's, it's a little bit simpler than some other calculators where you type in uh, integral and then your function, comma, lower limit, comma, upper limit. This looks more natural. I just want to click on, show you a few other functions under the math button. Some options you have. This is very similar to the other TI-89 style menu systems where you can scroll down and across to access different functions. Uh, give you some examples of that. Um, this calculator can also do list as on the 8389 types, uh, which is a very big advantage because once you have lists, uh, you can calculate linear regression formulas and you know, many statistics to do with those. And to get to that, uh, you hit the data button. It's strange to call it data, not list to me, but that's just the way they did it and you can type in your list and then to do functions on those you hit section data which gets you to the statistics uh, and so on button and then you have other options to go through and I'll scroll through those to show you what your options are and then I'll put distribution okay so they gave you kind of a brief overview uh, of some of the functions one of the biggest new features on this calculator I like is what Texas Instruments calls the multi-touch. Um, and what this is, is you can touch the same button twice and get two different functions without using the second button. And I'll show you what I mean by this. If you look at the sine button, as you see it says sine and inverse sine on the same button, but in the blueprint for the second button it says numerical solver. So to show you what this means, so I hit sine once, I get the sine function. If I hit it a second time, I get inverse sine, a third time, hyperbolic sine, and a fourth time, inverse hyperbolic sine. And a fifth time, I go back to sine. Now both sine, cosine, and tangent are all this way. And other buttons also have this multi-touch function, and they're typically denoted by buttons that have multiple items on the top of the button such as this where we have pi, e, or i for imaginary. That's a great new feature. I really like that. Uh, you can have a lot more functions and functionality with fewer buttons on the calculator. And I think it speeds it up versus 
on the 89 where you either have to hit the second button or the dom green diamond button to get the different functions. Now let's talk about some of the pros and cons of this versus previous Texas Instruments 30 style calculators. Um, a big advantage of this calculator as far as my knowledge is, is the ability to solve uh, equations and systems of equations. And what I mean by this is, this is even a, I think an advantage over the Casio calculator and I'll give you an example of this. I'm going to go to second in the numerical solver right here. And you can pretty much type in any equation you want and hit enter and I'll solve it. And so I'll give you an example of this. I'll just make up something here. We'll say sine of x is equal to, see we're in degree mode, so we'll say 1. Enter. We'll go on the solve and hit enter. It's kind, of, yeah, it's kind of a tricky problem for it because this happens on more than one occasion, so we'll see what it does here. And I guess apparently it gives you the first result it comes to. Maybe it says x equals 89.9 repeating essentially. So essentially that's sine of 90 degrees. And say you want to go back and add your equation, you can use the up arrow and go back and you see sine x is equal to 1 and to confirm that we'll quit and we'll hit sign 1 or excuse me, sign 9 is equal to 1 and there you have it, 1 so as you saw it said 89.9 uh, with some de lagging decimals, it's not exact uh, but for a quick calculation it can approximate pretty well for you um, this is also very useful. I just took my Certified Energy Manager certification this past week. And if you have a present value and an annual value and a known number of years and you're trying to solve for interest rate, that's an odd number that's not in your tables. So this is very useful. Uh, the calculation can take several seconds. You'll see the hourglass for several seconds, I've noticed. Uh, but then it does give you an answer and that saves you a lot of time for trying to approximate using tables. Some other functions I'll show you are, let's see, let's look at solving systems of equations. You can pick whether you have a 2x2 two two or 3x3 three three system. And also we'll do the polynomial solver. And you can let it know what form of equation you have. Um, so we'll try this one just to show you what it looks like. Type in A. Minus degree coefficient could not be 0. Okay. So we'll say 1, 2, 3, and solve. And then it gives you what x is, x1 is, x2 is. And then ask if you want to store those values, that's pretty nice. So anyways, gives you some more functionality. Um, we'll get out of that. But these kind of pro uh, functions can save you a lot of time if you're taking tests to have lots of math problems, very math intensive. Uh, some other advantages of this versus, let's say for example, the Casio. This calculator has some conversion factors and some units stored. So we'll hit second and number eight for convert. And we have some conversion factors for, temp for English to metric units, temperature, speed and length, pressure, power energy, and that's all the only categories. So for example, I want to look at power and energy. We have options to convert it from joules to kWh, from joules to calories, from horsepower to kW, from kWh to joules, from calories to joules, and from kW to horsepower. Uh, for, those, for those of you who don't know, kWh is kilowatt hours, so kW is just kilowatt. Um, one conversion unit that is noticeably absent is BTU. Uh, if you do any mechanical engineering work, the BTU is would be very helpful. Or if you do any kind of energy audits, that'd be very helpful. So I'd like to see Texas Instruments add BTU conversions to this in the future. Now we're going to look at some of the constants that are stored in the calculator. Also, it gives you the name of the constant 
and we can switch over to the next column and get the units of the constant. So we can see the speed of light, C, is in meters per second. And if we want to hit that C, you can use that in a formula. Just to show you what they have stored for that. Uh, they use two point, excuse me, two nine nine seven nine two four five eight. Typically we just say three times ten to the eighth. So they go a little bit more precise than uh, typically I do for calculations. But anyways, there's that. I'll scroll through the list of constants so you can look through there. We have speed, gravity, Planck's constant, uh, Avogadro's number, ideal gas constant, electron mass, proton mass, neutron mass, muon mass, universal gravity constant, Faraday constant, Bohr radius, electron radius, Boltzmann constant, electron charge, atomic mass unit, standard atmospheric pressure, and so on. They keep going. There's a list if you don't keep looking at it. Uh, but anyways, we'll clear out of this. Something that I wish the Texas Instruments had that the older Casio models have is the metric prefixes such as tera, giga, mega, kilo, milli, micro, nano, pico, and vento. And on the Texas Instruments, which even the old Casio calculator, I hope you can see this. You can do, let's say if you wanted 12 megawatts, you can do 12 seconds, 7 to get the me mega symbol. And now it's just like using the um, same thing as 12. In this part of the review, I'd like to show you about a error in the calculations or math print function of the calculator. This pertains to fractions involving pi and trying to show them in fractional form instead of decimal form. Now this doesn't happen every time. It's very intermittent, this error, but once this error occurs, it occurs uh, repeatedly. And I'll show you what I mean by this. So if you want to get your calculator to start, or you can look, follow me, if you'll just type in pi times 12.5 squared as if you're solving for the area of a circle and you hit the enter button you'll get 49 and the decimal excuse me 490.87 and then we'll say we want to convert this to the fraction so we hit the uh, convert to fraction button or whatever you want to call that and then it comes down here I'm just going to scroll down my history to show you this converts to 625 pi over 4 which is correct and we keep scrolling down, we'll convert that back to a decimal form and convert that back to a fraction form and then that's where the error occurs. Now it's not always in this exact sequence, sometimes it takes a few conversions to make this occur and it's kind of sporadic on how it shows up, I can't explain this. But once it happens, you've got to clear the memory to correct this issue. Because as you can see, 156 with the fraction pi over 4 is not equal to 490. It's nowhere near that. But, so you continued, if you didn't realize that, and you continued your work, and say so you did pi times 7.5 squared, and it gives you a decimal form of 176.7, which is correct. But then if you want to convert that to a fraction, it gives you 56 pi fourths, which is incorrect. And so now we've had this one incorrect error. Every time we do a problem similar to this, it's going to repeat this correct error, as far as I can tell. Now, this issue is listed on Texas Instruments website as part of their, as part of their knowledge database for this calculator as a known error. And their solution to it is to clear the memory on the calculator, which this is great for clearing the problem once it happens, but it does not really prevent the problem from happening in the first place. For example, if I clear the memory, I hit on and clear at the same time. And I'll say memory cleared. And so I'll clear that out. And now if I go back to seven, excuse me, pi 7.5 squared, I get 176.7, that's correct, the fraction function. 
and now I'm back to 225 pi over 4, which is correct. And if I continue going from the fraction to decimal, it may give me the wrong answer at some point. I can't really say when or how that will happen, but it does happen on this calculator. If you want to avoid getting this error, your best option may be to just look at just the decimal form and not the fraction form. Now this kind of eliminates part of the math print function of this calculator, which is a big selling point. But from my standpoint, I'd rather have the right answer every time versus having an infraction form. Yeah, if TI is watching this, I hope you do, and I hope you see how to correct this video, and I really hope you recall how these calculators, because if these were used in an engineering situation uh, where these calculations are, can, can be very important, and these could cause uh, grave errors, which could be very serious. So if TI is watching this, I hope you recall these calculators, including replace mine.